Hey, hello there. This is a tutorial on how to build this blob in a geometry nodes. It's like I wanted to create some oily droplets that come from the center and then disperse out. Someone on Reddit asked me how to build something like this. And I thought maybe it's interesting to share how to do this in geometry nodes. So if we go into geometry nodes, we can have a quick look on uh, how I build it. These are the nodes. Um, if you want to copy it, you can just uh, look at this. But for now, we are going to build it ourselves. So if we go into uh, new models, we create a plane. Uh, the plane is right here. We want to set it to position zero. Put the cursor there as well. And then create a new geometry node group. Uh, or network, I must say. What I started with was an icosphere. And from this icosphere, I was projecting other balls onto them. So creating more icospheres. So I duplicate it. I set uh, instance on points like this. Let's go to this view, then it's a little bit more visible. When I plug in this value, you see that I get a lot of balls intersecting. When I up the resolution a little bit, you see this. Uh, what I did was I started with a value of zero. So if we go to view, so the first icosphere that I created, I set to zero. So all the points are at zero. And then I project all these spheres onto all the points in the middle. So that's why you see that it is a ball. And let's also do a... No, I don't need a shade smooth. Because we are going to resample it with a volume node. So if we do this and then we up the radius, you see already what the effect is going to do. The balls are going to disperse and then break up. But how I uh, created this effect is with a uh, volume mesh to volume node. There we go. Now all the meshes have become volumes. If I turn on this, you can see it a little bit better. So if I now up the scale again, you see all these volumes disperse. If we then go from volume to mesh now it's uh, a blob again and then do a set. shade smooth shade it smooth I always set these to size then create a value and then put it uh, to maybe voxel size 10 not sure if that is too small or too big. Oops. Oops. Maybe one, no, zero, two, point zero two maybe. Yeah, point zero two looks fine. And now if we scale up our first circle or our first icosphere, you see that they don't really merge. Like what we want as a liquid is that they are going to merge together, just like uh, meta balls, they also do this. Um, if we put a, a realize instances between these nodes, you see that now they are merged together. Maybe now we have a little bit too small. Yeah, there we go. Now you see that it has become more liquid it maybe looks a little bit like a fruit and that is because all the balls are the same size so if we create a random value and then maybe from 0.2 to 1 set the scale now it looks more like it's breaking up into droplets what i also did was create a blur attribute so if we set the position here, 
and then we get a blur attribute we set it to vector and then get a position it takes the position of all the points and then blurs them a little bit and then it becomes a little bit smoother if we up this value you can see it becomes really smooth maybe that's a little bit too smooth it doesn't look like a liquid anymore but more like uh, something honey or uh, a gel maybe 30 is good enough we now do this you see that we have the effect already the blobs merge together and they become one with each other so let's put this to zero we plug it in here then we are going to set um, from one to 250 frames insert keyframe at the end we insert the keyframe and then uh, in the middle we make it like this 190 set the keyframe so if we now animate this you can see that the blob breaks apart and it looks really like a liquid like metabolic and you can play with the resolution if you want it rougher or maybe more accurate maybe you want to blur it more that's all possible what uh, might not be correct is that when we disperse this ball, the volume of these balls together are probably a lot larger than what we have here in the beginning. So what we can do, or what I did in the previous example, is take this value. So here they need to be smaller so if we go the first frame then insert a keyframe here and then at the end insert a keyframe and then in the middle we make them a little bit smaller maybe 0.7 maybe this one can go to zero maybe and one is better we also have to keyframe this we go from 0.2 here also 0.2 and in the middle 0.1 then if we play it the volume is more preserved like it's not totally accurate but i think it's good enough oh well, we have to change it a little to 0.7 insert we do it again now it should be more correct there we go this looks already like uh, fluids that are being dispersed so what i also did is i gave it a material it's nice because this setup is uh, really parametric like you can change all these values rotations you can give it more blobs if you want if we do like this you can change the beginning geometry maybe make um, multiple spheres into each other or maybe make a cube or whatever like you have all the freedom here to do what you want if we go to the end and we create a material set material then to material tab turn on the lighting i already made a material called material see here if we go into it select it um, i do this with an oily texture that i have and then i mix in uh, the layer weight the facing faces so as you can see, like the color of the faces that are facing you is different than the faces that are facing away from you. I can show you this if I plug this in directly. See the color change, like it gets this rainbow effect. Because we have a dark rainbow here, because I want it to look like oil, and that's why I made it a lot darker. And then 
plug it in. I multiply the color by this oily texture. If we go into rendering and then look at the texture, this is the texture that I'm using. I quickly uh, stitch it together in Photoshop so it looks a little bit uh, seamless. But uh, you can use any kind of oily texture that you can find. And then I set it to box. So it's projecting from the XYZ um, axis. And I mix it with a noise texture. So it becomes a little bit uh, wobbly. So if I create a plane here, I can show you what I mean. Let's make this the oily, let's call it oily. And if you can see here, it also is animated, so it doesn't look that static. But if I, for example, mapping the object, then plug it on, plug it in here. You can see what this does. Like I have this noise texture, and the noise texture makes it a little bit more wobbly. So as you can see, it looks a little bit more liquid at the scale of this noise. But basically, if you animate it, you get a little bit more noisy and wavy. I plug this uh, oily texture into the roughness, so the oil also has different uh, roughness values. So it looks really like there are oily layers floating in the bubble. Um, if I delete this cube back into my camera, this is the new one we made. Go. And it animates really nice. Now you know how to make the texture from this. Uh, anything else I did? Transmission is 100%. Metallic, put it to 7 or 0.7 because it, it's really shiny. So that's why I uh, made it look a little bit more metallic. You can see here, change, put it to 7. 7 was fine. So if we go back into the geometry nodes again, this is what we built now. Let's see if anything was changed. Uh, I plugged in more para parameters, but uh, basically it's the same thing. So uh, I also made a rotation here by scene time and then in the Z axis. So this blob rotates. And in the example that we just built, we don't do that. But here you see how to do it. So I hope this is useful and uh, see you in the next one. Okay, bye.